Let's get right into it. Number 10. Gobekli Tepe. Imagine you're an archaeologist in 1994, just doing your regular job of digging up old stuff in Turkey. You find what looks like a hill, and you think, great, another boring hill. But then you start digging, and suddenly you're having the biggest, hold up, wait a minute moment in archaeological history. What you've just found is Gobekli Tepe, and it's about to make archaeologists question everything they thought they knew about human civilization. This place is so old, it makes the pyramids look like they were built yesterday. We're talking 12,000 years old. That's before pottery, before writing, before metal tools, and before anyone thought humans could build anything bigger than a hut. These weren't just some rocks piled together. These were massive T-shaped pillars, some weighing up to 20 tons, carved with detailed animals and symbols. That's like trying to move and carve six elephants worth of stone with nothing but other stones. The people who built this didn't even have wheels yet. They were supposed to be simple hunter-gatherers running around chasing animals and gathering berries. But apparently, these simple people were out here building what's basically an ancient megachurch. It's like finding out your cat's been secretly doing your taxes while you sleep. And get this, this might have been the world's first temple. These people built a massive religious complex before they even invented farming. It's like building a five-star restaurant before inventing the concept of cooking. This find completely upended what historians thought they knew. The old story was that people settled down, farmed, and then built temples. Gobekli Tepe said, nah, we're doing this backwards, and suggests that maybe the need to build a community for religion came first which then led to agriculture. Our ancestors were out here moving 20-ton rocks up a hill to build a massive temple complex, and we still don't fully understand why. Number 9. Rogue Waves For hundreds of years, sailors would come back with stories about monster waves. They'd talk about walls of water, appearing out of nowhere, towering above their ships like liquid skyscrapers. Everyone thought they were lying, or drunk, or both. Scientists said these waves were statistically impossible. The math showed that waves couldn't get bigger than 60 feet in normal conditions. These sailors were talking about waves twice that size. On January 1, 1995, the Dropner oil platform in the North Sea was hit by a massive wave that seemingly came from nothing. And this time, we had proof. The platform's laser measuring equipment recorded a wave that was 84 feet high. That's like stacking four school buses on top of each other. The wave appeared in relatively calm seas, lasted for a few seconds, then disappeared like it never existed. Scientists had to eat their words and rewrite the textbooks. Since then, Satellite data has shown that these monster waves are actually pretty common. They pop up about 10 times a day somewhere in the world's oceans. Think about that next time you're on a cruise ship. We still don't fully understand how they form. Some scientists think they might be caused by waves traveling at different speeds and directions, combining their energy into one massive killer wave. Others think ocean currents might be focusing wave energy into specific spots, like a giant liquid magnifying glass. But nobody knows for sure. Number 8. Roman Concrete That Heals Its Self. The Romans built harbors and aqueducts that dealt with a constant problem, water getting into the concrete and making cracks. Most modern concrete would just keep cracking until it falls apart, but the Romans made concrete that gets stronger when it cracks. For centuries, modern scientists kept finding these tiny white chunks in ancient Roman structures and thought it was just sloppy mixing. It turns out, those mistakes were actually the secret ingredient. They intentionally mixed their concrete with quicklime. When water seeps into a crack, it reacts with these limestone bits. This creates a solution that fills and repairs the damage basically healing the crack from the inside. It's like having millions of tiny maintenance workers inside your concrete, just waiting for something to break so they can fix it. This is why structures like the Pantheon and Roman aqueducts are still standing after 2,000 years, while our modern bridges and roads start falling apart after a few decades. It's like comparing a Nokia phone to an iPhone. The new one looks sleeker, but drop them both and see which one survives. We lost this recipe for over 1,500 years. Scientists only figured it out in 2023, because it took us that long to realize the Romans weren't just really bad at mixing concrete. Number 7. Blood Falls In Antarctica, there's a five-story waterfall of blood-red liquid pouring out of a pristine white glacier. When scientists first found it in 1911, they thought they were hallucinating. At first, they guessed it was red algae, but they were wrong, and it took over 100 years to figure out what was really going on. Turns out, there's an ancient saltwater lake trapped under the glacier. This lake has been sealed off from the rest of the world for about 2 million years. This water last saw daylight when our ancestors were just learning to walk upright. The water in this lake is so salty it can't freeze, even in Antarctica's extreme cold. It's also got tons of iron in it. When this iron-rich water finally seeps out and hits the air, it literally 
nearly rusts, turning the water a shocking blood red. But here's the crazy part. Scientists found something living in this ancient, super salty, pitch black lake. There's an ecosystem of bacteria down there, surviving without oxygen or sunlight. These tiny organisms have been isolated for millions of years. They survive by breathing iron and sulfate instead of oxygen. It's like finding aliens, but right here on Earth. Number six, the glass rain apocalypse. Imagine you're a T-Rex just chilling living your best life. Then suddenly, an asteroid the size of Mount Everest slams into Earth at 45,000 miles per hour. The impact was so powerful, it didn't just crack the ground, it vaporized rock and shot it into space. As these molten rocks fell back to Earth, they didn't just fall like normal rocks. The heat and pressure turned them into tiny glass beads. The entire sky filled with glowing hot marbles. It was literally raining liquid glass across the entire planet. These glass drops, called tektites, were falling so fast and there were so many of them that they turned the atmosphere into an oven. The air temperature rose to about 2700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to cook a pizza in less than a second. Anything that wasn't underground or underwater was basically air fried in a global, planet-sized oven. Scientists found evidence of this glass rain in rocks all over the world. These glass beads are basically fossilized drops from an impossible apocalypse that actually happened. Number 5. The Zombie Ant Imagine you're an ant, just doing your ant thing, looking for food. Suddenly, a spore from a fungus called Ophiocordyceps lands on you. The fungus starts growing inside your body, spreading through your muscles like tiny puppet strings. When it reaches your brain, the fungus literally hijacks your nervous system. It's like someone installing malware in your head. You can't control your legs anymore. Your body starts climbing up a plant, even though every instinct is screaming at you to stop. You reach the perfect height, usually about 25 centimeters off the ground, where the temperature and humidity are exactly what the fungus needs. The fungus then forces you to bite down on the underside of a leaf with a death grip so strong it leaves marks in the plant tissue. And there you stay, frozen in place, while the fungus grows inside you. Finally, a long stalk bursts out of your head like something from Alien. This stalk then rains down spores onto the forest floor ready to create more zombie ants. Here's what's truly insane. Scientists found the fungus doesn't actually destroy the ant's brain. It just takes control of the muscles, turning the ant into a conscious prisoner inside its own body. Number 4. Octopuses edit their own genes. We're all stuck with the genes our parents gave us, but octopuses looked at the rules of genetics and said, nah, I'm good. These eight armed rebels can actually edit their own genetic code on the fly. It's like they have a built-in genetic word processor, casually rewriting their RNA whenever they feel like it. This isn't supposed to be possible. It's like finding out your goldfish is doing its own taxes. When an octopus encounters cold water, instead of just shivering, it literally rewrites parts of the code in its nerve cells to adapt. They can modify huge portions of their nervous system's RNA. That's like being able to upgrade your computer's software while it's still running. Most creatures have to wait millions of years for evolution to make these kinds of changes. Octopuses are like, hold my ink sack, I'll do it myself. The weird part is these changes don't get passed down to their kids. Every single octopus has to figure out how to hack its own system from scratch. This might explain why octopuses are so freakishly smart and adaptable. They're basically running genetic editing software, while the rest of life is stuck with whatever factory settings it got at birth. Number 3. The Forest That Talks You're walking through a forest, and all around you, trees are gossiping about you. Scientists discovered that trees have their own version of the internet running underground. It's a massive network of fungi that connects trees like a natural Facebook, letting them share resources and warn each other about dangers. When a hungry caterpillar munches on some tasty maple leaves, that tree sends chemical warning signals through this fungal network to its tree buddies. The other trees get the message, and start pumping their leaves full of nasty chemicals that make them taste terrible. It's like trees warning each other in a group chat. Mother trees, a term scientists actually use, use this network to feed their seedlings. They send sugar, water, and nutrients through these fungal connections to help their babies grow. It's basically a woodland DoorDash service. When an old tree is dying, it dumps all its remaining resources into the network, sharing them with its neighbors. A single mother tree can be connected to hundreds of other trees. Next time you're in a forest, you're not just walking among trees, you're walking through nature's social network. Number two. 2. The Iron Pillar of Delhi Imagine leaving something made of iron outside for 1600 years. You'd expect it to be a pile of rust, but there's this 
pillar in Delhi that didn't get the memo. It's been standing there since around 400 AD, just chilling in the open air, and it barely has any rust on it. This thing is 24 feet tall and weighs about 6 tons. To put that in perspective, a modern car starts showing rust after just a few years, but this ancient pillar looks like it just came out of the factory. For centuries, no one could figure it out. When scientists finally did, it blew their minds. The ancient Indian metal workers had accidentally created a perfect rust-resistant coating. When they made the pillar, they used iron ore with a high phosphorus content. This created a microscopic, passive protective film of a compound called iron hydrogen phosphate. Think of it like a clear phone case, but so thin you can't even see it. Modern scientists only figured out how to make similar rust-resistant coatings in the last few decades. These ancient craftsmen were basically doing advanced materials science without even knowing it. Number 1. Raining Animals You're walking down the street on a nice sunny day when suddenly a fish hits you in the face. This is an actual weather phenomenon that happens more often than you'd think. Back in 2021, residents of Texarkana, Texas, woke up to find fish scattered all over their yards and parking lots, hundreds of them flopping around on dry land. That's nothing compared to what happened in Serbia in 2005. Thousands of frogs rained down during a storm, turning the streets into a scene from a biblical plague. Then in 2015, a town in Australia had millions of tiny spiders fall from the sky, covering everything in webs. The locals called it spider rain. This happens because of water spouts. These are basically tornadoes over water, and they act like nature's vacuum cleaner. They suck up small, lightweight animals like fish, frogs, and spiders, and can carry them for miles. When the water spout loses power, gravity takes over, and the animals fall back down to Earth. And some of these animals actually survive the trip. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.